there, welcome over here to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you five new quick and easy family dinner ideas that cost only about $5 each to make. I know so many people right now who are trying to stick to a lower grocery budget, so I really hope this is helpful and let's go to my kitchen and start cooking. We're kicking today off by making this creamy tomato and spinach pasta. So to begin, on my cutting board, I'm dicing my one onion into smaller pieces. Now that I'm through with that, over to my pot of boiling water, I'm adding about a half a pound of my penne pasta in there. Just cook it according to the box directions. Now over to my pan on the stove, I added in a tablespoon of olive oil. Once my oil was hot, I added the onion that we just diced up. Saute the onion around until it's soft. Now that we have our onion soft, we are going to be adding in one can of diced tomatoes. You do want this to have plenty of flavor, so I'm keeping it pretty simple with the seasonings, but they are bold. A dash of salt and pepper, a half a teaspoon of dried oregano, and dried basil. Give this a really good stir to combine the seasonings in with the rest of the ingredients. Now you're going to want to add in two tablespoons of tomato paste along with a half a cup of water. Give this a stir to incorporate the tomato paste with the rest of the ingredients. After we had that simmering on our stove for a few minutes, it's time to add in our cream cheese now and our Parmesan cheese. So I added in three tablespoons of cream cheese and then a fourth a cup of that Parmesan cheese. Give this a really good stir, stir it frequently just so the cheeses melt down. Once they have melted down nicely, go ahead and add in two cups of fresh spinach. Stir the spinach around for about a minute or so until it wilts down and then it is ready to serve. Here's my big bowl of pasta. My entire family absolutely loves this meal. I really love how budget friendly it is and it does not taste budget friendly at all. This recipe is also very easy to double if you have a larger amount of people you wanna feed. Now we're making this extraordinarily easy sheet pan meal. This meal is full of vitamins and nutrients. I'm beginning by dicing my one sweet potato, my one green apple, a russet potato, and an onion. I set that to the side. Now I'm going to slice my turkey sausage into discs just like this. Now over to this large bowl, I'm adding the sweet potato, the regular potato, apple, and onion in there, along with two tablespoons of olive oil. And then you do wanna add plenty of seasoning, so a dash of salt and pepper, a half a teaspoon of dried basil, a half a teaspoon of dried sage, and then a half a teaspoon of dried rosemary. Give this a really good stir. After I pulled out my sheet pan, I made sure to line it with parchment paper just for easy cleanup. And then I dumped that sweet potato mixture right on top of that parchment paper and spread it out as even as possible. This baked on 400 degrees for 20 minutes. After those 20 minutes of baking, I removed it from the oven and then added my turkey sausage right in there. And then I gave this a stir. I placed this back into my oven to bake for an additional 20 to 25 minutes. Here's my plate of food. This is the type of meal that I can make on a weekly rotation over and over again. It is that good. Also, all of these veggies in this meal are very inexpensive, so this one is a winner winner. This one is an extraordinarily easy, fun one for pizza night, so to begin, Onto my sheet pan, I'm adding English muffin halves. So I'm just taking one English muffin, splitting it in half, and then adding them right onto my sheet pan like this. Of course, you could add as many or as little English muffin has halves as you want, just depending on your family size. And then I'm adding a little bit of pizza sauce. You could use any type of pizza sauce you like. And then after that, I kept the toppings very simple, just using what I already had on hand. So just a 
little bit of mozzarella cheese and pepperoni, but you could add any toppings you like. And then I place this into my oven to bake on 425 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes or until the cheese was nice and melty. Here they are out of the oven. These little English muffin pizzas require very minimal to no work at all. You cannot knock them until you try them. They are seriously that good. My little daughter, Brinley, she thinks they're regular pizzas. She loves them that much. Now we're making these black eyed peas and grains. And if you've never made anything like this before, you definitely have to. To my Dutch oven, I added two tablespoons of olive oil. Once my oil was hot, I added in one onion that I diced. I sauteed the onion around until it was soft. Now that it is soft, I'm adding my three cans of black eyed peas in. I did drain my cans of black eyed peas before I added them in. Add in two cups of vegetable broth at this point along with your seasonings which are a half a teaspoon of paprika, a half a teaspoon of oregano, and then a dash of salt and pepper. Give this a really good stir and then bring it up to a boil. Then drop it down to a simmer and let this simmer covered for about 15 minutes. You do want to stir it frequently while it's simmering though just so nothing burns to the bottom of the pot. Now that it is through simmering, your house should be smelling so, so good at this point. I have my potato masher and I'm mashing up some of the beans. We like it where some of the beans are mashed up, but not all of them. This is optional, of course. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. So after I'm finished mashing up some of the beans, I added in about three cups of fresh spinach. I gave this a stir to let the spinach wilt down and then it was ready to serve. You could serve this however you choose to do so, for example, with a little bit of white rice on the side or anything. I actually had some slices of sourdough bread left over that I wanted to use up, so I served it alongside of that, but this has extremely great flavor. You'd love it. Now we're getting started on these barbecue chicken sandwiches with carrot fries on the side. So to my instant pot, or you could just boil your chicken in a pot of water, whatever you prefer. I added two large chicken breasts right in there along with a cup of water. I put the lid on top, made sure I set my valve to ceiling, and then I cooked this on high pressure for about 23 minutes. While that's cooking away, I'm going to cut up our carrots into kind of like french fry sizes. And then I put the carrots into this medium sized bowl. And into this bowl, I'm adding two tablespoons of olive oil. And then for the seasonings, I'm doing a dash of garlic salt, paprika, and onion powder with a little dash of pepper. And then I gave this a stir to combine the seasonings with the carrot sticks. I placed the carrot fries onto my sheet pan lined with parchment paper and then I baked this on 425 degrees for about 30 minutes. I did flip um, these carrot fries a couple of times while they were baking so they cooked evenly but here is my chicken out of the instant pot. I shredded it up and then I added a half a cup of barbecue sauce to the chicken. You could use any type of barbecue sauce you love and then I gave this a really good stir to incorporate the chicken and the barbecue sauce together and then after that it was ready to serve so I served the chicken in a hamburger bun that I toasted up in a little bit of butter on the stove and then I served it with those carrot fries on the side and if you've never made carrot fries before you really should carrots are super inexpensive in the grocery stores and my daughter actually loves them she eats them with ketchup I hope you found a meal for yourself today and I would really love to have you here. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.